Hey everyone, it's your favorite dynamic duo, Marcus and Carmia Wells, the unorthodox Southern Belle, and we are here to introduce a fabulous woman. This woman is a post senator, worked in the government official space, and now coming to the real estate investment side, and she is a wealth of knowledge, all the way from beautiful, beautiful Hawaii. And we're so jealous. I'm jealous. Carmia, are you jealous? Bet. Can't wait. I would love to see the place. Can't wait that for that time to go. Same, same. We need to go. We need to go. Gentleman Style Podcast, that is on our mission. We got to get out there to check it out. So you all stay tuned for this fabulous guest that we have coming to the stage. You won't want to miss one second of the tea she's spilling about real estate, the economy, and how Hawaii has been and where it's going. Here we go. Go. Hey everyone, it's your favorite host, Dynamic Duo Hostesses with the Moses of Gentleman Style Podcast, Marcus and Carmia Wells, the Unorthodox Southern Bale. Thank you all for being here. Don't we're just going to do some quick housekeeping rules. We are on iHeartRadio, radio.com, Apple, Facebook, Audible, Re- Ghana Radio, anywhere you get podcasts. We are there. And today we have a very special guest. This woman spent her time, her energy, and, and experience working in the government of Hawaii. Aloha, aloha to those tuning in. And now she's serving her community in a different way and working in the real estate development side of things. So she has a wealth of knowledge coming to the Gentleman Style Podcast stage. She has experience and talked and spoke about all the things that are that matter are important. And today she's on Gentleman Style Podcast show to help us understand the significance and the power besides the beauty of Hawaii. So without further ado, we can't help and hold this lady back, this incredible woman, Miss Leilan Bento, coming to the stage. Welcome, welcome, Miss Bento. You look fabulous. Thank you for making time to be on the Gentleman Style Podcast show. Thank you. Thank you both for inviting me, and um, I'm excited to do this podcast today. We're excited to have you. This is huge. This is significant. I want to say, first off, I always ask a story. There's a story behind, there's always a story behind someone that works as hard as you have. And the political arena is not easy. It's not easy to work in the political sector. No. What, what brought you into that industry? What inspired your, your journey there? I was, um, I'm a granddaughter of a senator. My grandfather was a senator for decades here in Hawaii. And um, he was an incredible man. He is the American dream. Um, he was a Republican, but was endorsed you know, by the unions, right? Because he, that's where he came from. And I was working in hotel sales. And one day he said, the governor has a a, a position. You should go work there. And growing up in a political family, I was like, Oh no, you know, I don't, I don't want to go into politics. And he, I didn't have a choice. I was in my early twenties and I started it, uh, started working for uh, the governor of Hawaii. Her name was governor Lingle. And it was one of my most favorite jobs because I realized quickly that I could actually make a difference in people's lives, especially being a native Hawaiian. Um, they're leaving this state, right? My own people are leaving the state. And so helping you know, a single mom find a job or an ex convict, get his you know documents. It was just every day I would go home and it was like, okay, it didn't matter who was in office, right? It was like, I was able to actually help my own community and help my own people. So that's when I started to just, love it and then go into networking and knowing the different government departments right and um the, the, also the history of why laws are the way they are and i you know i learned very early on it's crucial to know what's going on in politics know what those politicians are passing because it affects our everyday lives i mean whether we like it or not so i always try to encourage people to vote and just to get involved, you know, also on boards or wherever they can volunteer. Absolutely. So that's kind of how I transitioned to the governor's office. What in what was your favorite thing about working in the government's office, and what came? What was your least favorite? 
Can you share any any tea there? What what was your uh, least favorite thing to do? The least favorite uh, thing to do would be, you know, who who comes through the office, right? And sometimes they're developers too, and they're trying to weasel their way in, right? And it's like, you know, they don't have good intentions. And I remember this one day, um, cause I come from humble beginnings, right? And there was a developer very pushy, actually from Atlanta. And he, yeah, he, <laughs> gives me, he walks in, he tells me, I, I need copies. I'm meeting with the governor, so I need, to, we need to make copies. And I'm looking, I'm on the copy machine and I'm looking at his plans, right? And I see that he's going to be dynamiting, I'm not kidding, one of our harbors to make this extravagant luxury development. And then I walk out there and I'm like, you're not going to be doing this here. And he said, oh, yes, I am. But don't worry, for your people, we'll have a little cultural center. I'm like, we don't learn our culture in a cultural center. You're born and you're, learned, you're taught that by, we call our kupunas, our grandparents, in your living room. Like, we know our culture, you know, it's like... We don't need an amphitheater. So I remember that going, I hope this guy's development gets shut down. And it did. <laughs> but it was like, I was blown away at what he was thinking he was going to do. And, you know, just like satisfy the Hawaiian community, right? That's what they sometimes try to do to us is three parking stalls and a little cultural room for you. You know, it's like, mm, no, we need to do a little bit more for the community. So that was kind of <laughs> yeah, okay. But, excuse me, I'm sorry. Speaking of the Hawaiian community, I was um, looking into some articles and for quite some time they were speaking regarding the locals that were born there and lived there that are not able to afford the, you know, the living, the economy. Yeah. There is too much for them. Right. How, from, you, from your standpoint, working in the gov governor's office, it, do you guys see that updating or changing anytime soon for them because these are we're not talking about people coming there to live we're talking people who were born there right they can't even live in a in their hometown yeah they're between um i, I come from a family of four and then i have three step brothers only my sister and i live here and my you know my brothers are all living in texas and in california and they are attorneys or educated but to even start here you know hawaii is the most expensive state to live in right you have dozen eggs are like $13, right? A loaf of bread is 10. It's like a gallon of milk is 16. It's like, how do you feed a family, right? So the local community here, um, they're working multiple jobs, you know? So what's the quality of life then, right? And I think a lot of them give up. Um, and my mom always says our biggest export is our kids, right? They, you take, you have them leave the islands and they miss home, but they don't come back because there's not enough jobs or, you know, they have a, it's easier for them to get a start in at life, right? Maybe in a much cheaper state like Arizona or a lot of Hawaiians actually went to Vegas. They call it the ninth island, actually. Vegas. So, yeah. What's in Vegas? So I was trying to figure that out, but um, I watched a podcast and it was explaining because Hawaii has such a dominant hospitality industry that when they were promoting Las Vegas decades ago, a lot of Hawaiians started moving over, right? It's the same industry and it's a fraction of the cost to live here. So it's kind of interesting how there is actually more native Hawaiians outside of Hawaii than actually here. So it, yeah. But it's it, cheaper it, uh, to live in Vegas. I mean, yeah. it's cheaper to live yeah. in Hawaii than Vegas. No, it, it's cheaper to live in Vegas than Hawaii. Right. So they really? had the same type of job, right. In the hospitality hotel industry. And that's what started people, you know, one by one. Hawaii is, you know, coconut wireless, right? They always say it's not what you know, it's who you know in the state, right? So it's like one one family will move over there and then they'll tell their cousins and then, you know, they're all related. So then they all start moving over there. Um, but you have stayed the entire time. What has encouraged you? What has motivated you to stay? Is it changed the impact that you've you've done in, in, in governorship? And what's um, what I actually moved out at 18 to California and then I had my daughter. I married my high school sweetheart. I've been married for 24 years and he was in the Marine Corps. He went to the Marine Corps and we were living in San Diego and I was in school there. And then I got pregnant with my daughter. I call her my birth control baby. And so I moved <laughs> back here. I moved back here with my family because I'm like, I don't know anybody in San Diego. Right. And my family, Hawaiians, we all 
we're very close, right? So you take care of each other's kids. So I'm like, I'm going to move back here. So I did for a little bit there live in California, um, which I liked it, but it, it wasn't home, right? And so I moved back here. And then that's when I started, you know, going into the hotel industry, working sales, selling Hawaii, then into government and then um, into real estate. But for me, I've my own family, to be honest, has had to sacrifice my husband. He's a Hawaiian too. And he left. My daughter is 21. She's a junior at USC. And um, he had to leave when she was, what, eight years old. He worked for the electric company here. And he went to California because he would make eight times what he would make here in Hawaii, right? And then we wanted to put my daughter in a private school, wanted to put her in a good college with both of us not finishing college, right? And so that's been kind of my family layout, but that's a lot of families here in Hawaii. You're like spouses working in another state and travels back and forth and so are your kids. So that's been uh, my honest family life for a while now, but he had to make that sacrifice, right? To get my daughter where she needed to go. Shout out to an incredible yeah. man. There's no place like home though. Yeah. No, right. no place like home. That's huge. Thank you for that. And so you worked in, in, in governorship and you, you shared a, a con. What was the pros? What was something that you really enjoyed working there and what you learned and, and really experienced from working I, in the government sector? Yeah, I learned quite a bit. I mean, just different topics, laws, um, you know, how, you know, even how Hawaii follows the U.S. mainland. We're, we're a little be, way behind, but it follows like different trends, right? What's going on in other states? We kind of are the last to change it. Um, or, you know, to implement different laws. I did get to understand what each department does, you know, between the state, county, and federal government, and how um, important Hawaii actually is of our location to the United States military also, right? And why the military, you know, has bases everywhere here. Um, it's pivotal, right? It's in the middle of the, of the Pacific. Strategic, um, yeah. Yeah. And so, and what's the stronghold that Hawaii has to the U.S., right? And I find it very unique because you have the, I think the highest percentage of billionaires, they all own here and I, the older I got, it was like, why, you know, and not just the culture, I think because Hawaii is safe, right? It's paradise. It's part of the United States and people feel safe because that's what they keep telling me, you know, when I sell real estate and like, what, you live in a nice area. Like I know, but you know, homelessness or, you know, it's not safe. They don't feel safe shopping or whatever it might be. And Hawaii is safe. We all know each other, right? It's like your cousin's the detective and your uncle's the police chief. And so we can figure it out quickly. There is a crime. Yeah. That's true. That's yeah. true. It's a, it's a community. That that community. Everyone knows everyone. Uh, I hated it growing up on my island because <laughs> I couldn't. I, I, if I got in trouble, it was yes. like seconds before my dad knew. Yep. My mom and dad knew. So that cultural um, connection. Yeah. Oh, I grew up with your father. Why? Do, you're you're Mr. Norman. You're Mr. Yeah. Norman's son. Come here. <laughs> come here. Get get out of here. Get out of here. Yep. What you doing here? It was it was really. Um, it saved yeah. me because yeah. I could have got in trouble, but it also helps. Like you said, it moves things a lot faster. Go ahead, Carmia. Yeah. But with because you did mention that you're within real estate now. I want to know what are um, some common difficulties that you uh, experience while you were, you know, in, you know, you're still there in Hawaii while you're yeah. selling homes or people are trying to sell their homes. Can you give us some examples or yeah. what you've been through so far? The difficulty would be that not just that Hawaii is the most expensive state, but it has the strictest building regulations in this country the strictest environmental laws in this country. And so to just change zoning and to build takes about 10 years. The project, yeah, it's, it's it's so much red tape between the county and the state. Um, and so that's what takes time. There's like a saying, if you want to develop in Hawaii, it's time and money, right? Because it's just, and people usually go and get, um, like my mom, she's been spearheading that development because she knows people in government, right? But to me, I'm always thinking, and I tell the politicians this, why do people have to go in and get somebody? Why can't the general public walk in and get help, you know, or get direction of what to do? Why, why is it so confusing and you have to know people, you know? I don't think that's fair at all. Um, but the difficulty is local families. I mean, there's the middle class is struggling, right? And so to find the development we are on, which I'm excited about, 
is going to bring a ton of affordable housing, which is why we, my mom and I have stayed on it for 10 years because we have a database. There's all these families waiting. Um, and the pricing, what people don't know, it's, it's from the government. The government prices it, right? So that's also like a double-edged sword where people are like, oh, you know, Kauaians, like the way we speak, they're like, oh, you're selling the land and that's not affordable. You know, it's probably going to be between like 300000 and high, maybe high 700000 mm-hmm. Um, But it, the, the developer doesn't set those prices, right? The government actually does when you're trying to do affordable housing. And then our state, it's so expensive to build, right? And it mm-hmm. takes time to build. But then if you want to do like exemptions, uh, you have to hire or pay union wages. So it makes doesn't make sense mathematically right for a developer so that's why they have to do some affordable housing and then they have to go high end because they're going to need to make up that difference right they can't sell a home that's five hundred thousand when you know when it costs them a million to build it right it just True. that's why right. wow. well, yeah and i think the one that we're on will be the biggest in the state and i'm excited because it's actually in a very um nice area they call it the gold coast and it's, it's sad because 12,000 people every day travel from the other side of the island to this side to work because this is where all the jobs or most of the jobs are. And, you know, they leave their home at like four. I've asked them. They go they get home like eight at night. So, I mean, what's the quality of life? Right. You can't coach mm-hmm. your kids basketball games. Right. You're too busy working and driving. And so that's what we're trying to that where the development location is. They can actually live and work right here. Right. Just go down the hill. I mean, two minutes away. And when you say it from one side of the island, you're not talking, they're not transitioning from islands to islands because there's a series of islands um, that make up Hawaii. Right. These people are traveling across the water or just traveling from one side to the from other? From one side of the island. So our particular island, we call it the big island. It's a Hawaii island. And, but all the islands in the entire state fit in our one island, right? In the island that we're on. And so it's, it's a long, it's a, hours in, in the car, right? And it's only like a two lane road. Ooh. Yeah. So it's, you know, or they catch the bus, but we don't really have a big public transportation system here. So it's like, if you miss the bus, then you miss the bus, right? It's like, oh, I got to or sleep in my car or whatever, right? Till the next day. So it's, yeah, it's, well, you know, growing up on an island, right? You're the lack of amenities. Yeah. 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 Is either a car or yeah. Um, public transportation, the little that there is, or yeah. you're walking or, right. you know, phone a friend. And, right. you know, you got to get creative. You have to get creative. I think I didn't get a car until I was in high school. Um, yeah. But that made a huge difference um, for me because I was a very active kid. So I was very mm-hmm. mobile. I had three jobs. And yeah. so my parents, it made sense to my parents to give me a car. I wasn't right. a kid right. that was like, oh, I need a car so I go to clubs so I can pick up chicks and date. No, I yeah. need a car because I need to get from this job to this job. And if mom and dad, if you guys don't want to pick me up at one o'clock in the morning, I need a car Yeah, <laughs> from yeah. my work, from my job, because public yeah. transportation stops running at a certain time. Right. Yeah. So, so that that huge impact me, that that truly impact yeah. me and kind of, you know, made me the man I am today. And that's yeah. huge. And, and how who, is your how is your experience in governor's office influence your approach to real estate and development today? Because you know it takes months and months to months to get zoning and get properly yeah. sanctioned um, to do the work to do to stimulate the economy. How has that how has that impacted your real estate development experience? It helped me because I was able to navigate, you know, the different departments and who's in charge and get. I think I would say just to get the answers quickly instead of waiting and having to drive to these government offices and get an answer. It's. It's interesting people, um, my mom said they operate in silos, right? In government, they don't speak to each other, right? Planning doesn't speak to public works, public works doesn't speak to finance, right? So you have to make sure, and that takes years of building relationships. I mean, I think I've spent, I don't know how much gas money going in there. You know, I, I teach my real estate agents that work for me, go in there. You know, it's hard to say no if someone's in front of you, right? Go in there, introduce yourself. In Hawaii, our culture is like, I don't know, go take them poke bowl, go take them sushi, right? It's, it's, that's what we do. That's just part of like our culture, right? Of how we do business here. You just don't walk in, drop your, drop work for them to do and don't even say thank you and walk out, right? They're not going to help you. 
Um, so I just kind of try to encourage people that, you know, if you're in business, go and meet these people, right? That's what I did. And um, so that they know a face when you're trying to write emails and stuff to them. Um, so that's really helped me just knowing how to navigate quickly the different government departments to help a client if they want to, I don't know, people move here and want to do all kinds of things, yoga retreat or kids camp, you know, so it's kind of hard to understand um, when people want to do a certain, like build a certain, you know, something unique that you can't just go in and build it, right? You're going to have to go through all these different departments, extra permitting, and just those types of things. So it's played a crucial part in my real estate career. Yeah, absolutely right. Again, my experience in growing up on an island, I, <laughs> I remember I needed my birth certificate for, oh a, for a job here yeah. in, in, the, in Virginia. And yeah. I needed my birth certificate and I didn't have it. I didn't have a copy of it. So I called yeah. home. I said, Dad, do you have it? And they're yeah. like, no, son, we don't have it. So my island, I had to, <laughs> I had to go online and I tried to see if there's an electronic application that I can apply yeah. for and all of that. Nope, there's a paper application. I have to print it off, fill it out, <laughs> mail it to the the um the, exactly the hospital. Yeah. I have to mail it to the hospital, physically mail it, um, put a check in there for payment to pay for a, a copy to be printed. And then I remember a week later, I called them, I called the, the department office and I said, Hey, did you get my application for my birth certificate? I need a copy for this job. Yeah. And they're like, Oh, yeah, it's here. We're going to process it. We haven't processed it yet. The second week, I call again. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's here. We're going to process it. We haven't processed it. Third week, I call. We can't find it. <laughs> so I called my dad and told him what happened. And he drove up to the hospital. And he and because they found the paperwork, but I yeah. had jacked up the paperwork. I had messed it up. So I had yeah. missed some information that I didn't fill right. in. And But because my dad showed up, they gave, they released it to him, and then my father had to mail it to me. But oh. They would not mail it to me directly. No, no. So I, 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 that's what I had to do. Just coming from that island world, it's, it's, yeah. it's a huge transition. It is, it is, and it's like people when they move here, I'm just like, okay, just be prepared. You're gonna have to have a lot of patience. You know, you're gonna get more <laughs> no's than yeses, and yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. My sister owns a, a beauty salon here, and. She, it's called the DCCA. So it's for if you're licensed, you know, and own a beauty shop, you go through the state department and she, she's, I swear she's calling them all the time and they keep telling her, you know, she actually went in person because she's like, they're like, we didn't get your paperwork. She's like, it's really weird though. You cashed my check. <laughs> so right. Someone got the paperwork, you know, is it under someone's cookie jar? I don't know. You know, on the desk. <laughs> so we always just laugh, it, especially when I have clients that, you know, move here from like New York. I'm like, listen, I know it's different where you're from. Don't go in there and start screaming in the office because they're going to smile and then they're going to shred your paperwork, you know, as you leave. Ooh. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was Nasty. like, you know, you have to go in there. Please and thank you as a start, you know. So, That's super true. Super. You can't be nasty. You can't you can't be no. nasty to island folk at all. They're very, they're very loving. They're very nurturing, but you got to respect the culture. Yeah. I, um, I've seen several artists um, come from outside, come to the island, yeah. and they'll they'll host an event. They'll have a concert, and then they'll leave, and then talk trash about the island. Well, the people will come back at you. Like yeah. the people, <laughs> will. The people, the people will co yeah. protest against you and say, "We don't want that singer, that artist." That recently mm -hmm. happened to my island. We had a. a a, a big well-known singer in the United States come to the island, did a concert, and then she came and went live and said, Oh, the, the people stink. The people, the island smells bad. So the <laughs> they the people went back and retaliated and said, We don't want that that artist to ever come back to this island again. Wow. And she cannot come back to the island. No, so. people don't understand that. They will kick you right out, you mm -hmm. know. So yeah. it's huge, huge, huge. It working, I'm, I want to pivot here. Working in leadership, working with other leaders and working in government, what has leadership, what are some leadership lessons you've learned and now use today that have been most valuable in your current role and with your current business ventures? I think just keep going. I, you know, that this development that my mom and I are on, we do regular, I just, right now I do regular real estate until that goes, but that has been a full-time job. And for free 99. Right. And I mm. just 
do we just so there has been so many moments of so many no's right and um but you see at, my mom and i'm like you know what but we have to keep going and some days it's hard because we didn't think it was going to go through you know or we got a no or you get you know, oh we you know a little 10 steps forward but then like 20 steps back right and it's like oh. and it's, sometimes it's just one like government worker holding it up right and it's just like i just tell them straight what if this is your auntie you want grandma wants a house you know what i mean i know where your kids moved away right it's kind of like just being straight with them but it's 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 been tough. It hasn't been easy. It hasn't been an overnight success. And it just, it, you know, kind of lean on my mom because we both, you know, been so many meetings and then you're dealing with politicians and everybody talks about affordable housing, even all the way up to the presidency. Right. And it's like, but behind closed doors, what are you going to do to get affordable housing? Right. Like your speech or campaign, you keep talking about it, but so it's been frustrating to see what politicians are real. Right. And then just to, just keep going. I mean, my mom has really helped me because some days it's like, I don't know if this is going to work. What are we doing? We're not even getting paid. You know what I mean? And it's, mm -hmm. but I just kept thinking, no, it's for my own people because that is like why I got into real estate, right? I'm going to help my own people. I'm going to keep them here. And to me, yeah, you know, Hawaiians, they get frustrated. So then they'll leave. And to me, it's like, no, stay and fight. You know what I mean? We came here years ago in double haul canoes not a ship and double haul canoes as hawaiians and we created an entire civilization so that is the resilience that i feel like you know what we did that that's where i come from that's my bloodline we're gonna stay and fight right and i'm and i've done that i've created a scholarship fund for local kids this year i adopted the county parks for my company because i'm trying to see with the success i've had we say it in hawaiian it's called uh, you have to have a kuleana. A kuleana is a responsibility to give back to your community, to give back to the next generation, right? And so to me, it's like with that success, oh, you go know, on nice vacations and own homes, that's not going to help my people, right? How is it going to truly help my people? Educating the kids, cleaning up the parks, you know, all of these things that we do in the community. It's like, it's it's important to me. It's my core values. It's, I know I look like I'm from LA, but I started in real estate with $8. I come from a place called Hawaiian Homelands, considered the hood. So I remember growing up, you know, with the name, like being around this and thinking, we're going to make a difference, right? How are we going to make a difference and keep all of us here? Because I would love to see my great grandchildren still in the islands, right? At some point and fishing and doing how we were raised, right? Our cultural practices. It's just, it's, it's crucial and it's vital for me to just keep fighting. So that's what's kept me going. Um, I'm gonna shoot it too. I'm gonna shoot it too. She got me, y'all. She, she got me. Yeah, That's it's you know, I think we see it across the country, right? Just, and I think with the Hawaiian history, the people don't really understand what they did to us. We were there, we almost were extinct, right? And we were in segregated schools, and my father would get hit in school for even saying a Hawaiian word. So there was just so much fight that to get us to where we're at. And I am excited though. There's more uh, Hawaiian people running for office and getting involved, you know, for so long, it was like, ah, they're all crooks. I'm not going to vote. And it's like, no, we've got to vote. You know, we have a voice. You got to vote. It's the least you can do. And so I'm excited to see this year more uh, local people, as I would say, running for office. Yeah. Good. Good. You, you you touched on it, the expense. I had no idea that it was that expensive to live. And yeah. that's what this passion project that you and your mom and your family have taken on. Can you give me any, can you tell me what is it currently for a two bedroom, one bath? What is the cost of that now? And then what is the cost? Yeah. So right on this coastline, it's about a little under a million if you want a condo. And then for a home, it's 1.2 million. That's the uh -huh. starting. It's it. That's how off balance it is, right? Of who can afford that? And in Hawaii, you have you're, you're going to drive by a home and you're going to see like six, seven cars because you have multi generational families, right? You have grandma living with their kids, living with their grandkids because they're yeah. all um yeah just to survive, right? Because Hawaiians have they usually have big families. I only have one, which is rare, but they usually have like four or five, six kids. Right. And so 
Yeah. So they have like, and then culturally, we don't put our grandparents in a home. Like that's disrespectful, right? So we, you know, when they start getting sick, they live, you have to take care of them. So that's why you'll see them all living together. That makes uh, sense. So, so yeah. we're not dropping grandma off at the nearest center. We're no. taking care of yeah. her. Yeah, we're taking care of her. Exactly. Yeah. So that that would make your mortgage probably what five thousand, six thousand dollars a month, and yeah. that's and that so that's where yeah. you you and your mom with the three hundred to seven hundred thousand dollar homes right are making it affordable, are trying to make it affordable again. Right, right. And then you know they have um, I'm trying to think of what they it's called an AMI chart, right? And again, it's like well we, we want to build this, but then. You have to, you're going to put people in this little in these blocks, right? They can't make more than this, and only so many, you know, family members. But then it's like, I had to tell the head of housing, well, then let's let's think about families. By thinking of myself when my daughter was playing sports, it's like five hundred dollars for a boy to sign up for Pop Warner here, right? So you have these kids selling like cookies to buy shoes, right? It's just because it's so expensive. And then I'm thinking, okay, five hundred, and you have four kids going to play football. I'm just the realities of like the everyday expenses, right? We have the highest electricity in the country. You have, you know, food costs are soaring, right? So I'm thinking, okay, we can put them in this mold, but in this chart, they make this amount of money, but then you start doing like, what are their expenses? They can afford this, you know? It's so it's like, we're working on that. I'm like, you are not gonna be able to put a family in this perfect little box, right? With the cost of living here. That's true. Okay. Yeah. I think what mortgage mortgage is like eighteen hundred here in Virginia. Carmia, okay. what's what's mortgage? What's what is it? You guys, what's it there in in Atlanta? Oh, depending where you live, but <laughs> it's high. It's high. high. It's, it I yeah. know. I I know a lot of people because I'm working on looking for a home. Yeah, but I'm renting. So we we want to go to Hawaii. Rent, yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> That's like flying across to be homeless right now. No. <laughs> <laughs> well, when Miss Miss Bento is finished, now yes. it's, it's what are you projecting to be done? Yeah, it's know. a fifteen year build out. Okay. And there, I think it, there's there's three thousand homes. We're trying to get six thousand to so increase the density because that will put a dent into uh, affordable housing. I think we are, we are short. Our island has about two hundred thousand people. And we're short. This is before COVID, right? Everybody moved here in COVID. Um, oh, wow. They did. And um, as the locals moved out. And um, it's uh, 13,000 homes short. Just what our, we're short. That's our shortage right now. So we're in a housing crisis. So, so you're now, pushing to make a dent at least half, close to half. Yeah, trying okay. to. Yeah. And 15-year project. So your timeline, you're not going to be done until after 2030. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. Then. That's that's huge. Yeah. That's a huge need, a huge necessity. Are you are you as you finish a pro, a house? Are you le, le, are you putting someone in, or you're not putting yeah. anyone in until all the houses are done? It depends on how they're building it with the subdivisions. But yeah, we and we already have. I have people all the time calling me. A and massive England. wait list. Yes. Yeah. So yeah. you said you and, have a massive wait list of people. Yeah, and it was kind of it was sad. Um, I don't know if you folks saw the news. Last year, we have Mauna Loa Mountain. So that is like a main artery, like a main road that cuts the island. From That's where people drive from one side of the island to the other side. Well, that mountain had erupted. So the lava, yeah, was going. And I was thinking, oh, my gosh. And they were calling my mom. People were calling my mom saying, are you guys starting yet? Because if that, that lava crosses that main road, I mean, they're going to have to go all the way around the island. You know, you, you guys have an active volcano still? We have, we have a couple of them. We have one that's a Kilauea. That one's always erupting. And then Mauna Loa, oh. I think. I didn't, yeah. I'm so curious. Like, how often does it erupt? <laughs> what are we talking about? Like, how often? Like, this is, like, with it's a, like, it's natural, like, rain. How often? <laughs> yeah. We have Kilauea Volcano. Uh, that one's always erupting. That's on the south side of the island. And then Mauna Loa, I think it hadn't erupted in, like, 100 years. So that's what was rare, that it was actually... Oh, so that's just like a ticking time bomb? Yeah, they're like slow moving um, volcanoes, though. So you can just watch, you know, the lava coming down the mountain. Um, but a couple of years ago, Kilauea volcano, it ruined about, I think, about 500 homes in this one area. So on now side. so now I got to ask a question. How, where, where is this development? Where are you guys building? Are you guys building where 
on the no. other side of the volcano where you're building a way like, yeah on the west side of the island okay so we're building see. right it's in, right across the street from what we call the resort areas you have housing with hotels those types of communities they're all gated and then right across the street from that who, which is who, perfect because that's where everybody works right in the good. resort areas what yeah. it, what it, people could uh, What's the insurance like? I, who's covering volcano insurance? Is that Geico? Who's who's that? It used to be Lloyd's of London. Yeah, it used to be Lloyd's of London. And when that when Kilauea ruined all those homes, they started they pulled out. So then our state had to actually step in and start insuring homeowners there because the insurance companies were like, "I'm not going to take that know. risk." Yeah, it's, that's basically what uh, a lot of those flood insurances did in Florida because it's a hurricane that hits them every year. They can't miss it. <laughs> and they can't miss that bus for anything. So they're like, look, we're not covering for that anymore. At this point, you got to need to learn how to sink or swim. Move. Just move. <laughs> Just leave. Well, that's what's happening right now with the condos because of Lahaina, right? Lahaina burned last year, right in August. And all of a sudden the insurance companies are kind of copying like what you're just saying, Florida and California with their brush fires and Florida with the hurricanes. Now it's Hawaii because Lahaina burned, right? The, had a fire there. Um, uh, I think all the condo insurances, what they're doing right now, they're increasing like between four and 700%. And so people are like, I don't have money paying this. You know, the HOAs are like doubling for a condo. Um, and I, so that's what I know our state legislature is trying to tackle right now. Cause the state law is like, you know, mandates you to have so much insurance, but then it's like, well, they just increased or almost doubled. Right. Without like only like a quick notice too. It wasn't like giving these homeowners associations time, right. To kind of like budget it. It was just, Oh, Lahaina happened. We're increasing. That that's that's huge, and and she almost had me all. She almost had. Me. I was right on the line of like maybe we can work because I just spoke to a gentleman and his wife, yeah. and they're moving to Hawaii. They're okay. they're building their dream house, and it, they opened uh, a couple couple businesses in in where did he say he was? And he said he's like between you and me, my <laughs> wife and I are getting out of here. <laughs> I think he's trying to leave before the election. That's what the conversation was. So he and his wife are moving to Hawaii. And I'll so now I, I need to yeah. send him this interview <laughs> so he could get an idea and he can reach out and he can ask questions. Go ahead. Yeah, Carmen. absolutely. Do you know what just, island? Oh no, go ahead. I'm sorry. Sorry. Do you know what island they're moving to? Or I, I can ask him. I will ask him because yeah. now this 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 interview has a whole new perspective, um, perspective. on this the, the yeah, on the islands. This is huge insight. You, she is dropping nuggets this episode, y'all. Yeah. This is huge. Miss Bento <laughs> saving the day. <laughs> so before you build, you guys need to talk to Miss Bento to understand the development, what island has the least active volcanoes, what island is the best for work-wise. Yeah. Unless you're like an entrepreneur. If you got if you work remotely, then it doesn't matter where you work, right? Yeah. Right. And so, but Miss Bento is the plug right yeah. now. This is huge. This Thank is huge. you. This is You're right, though, about flood zones, because Hawaii has all of these layers of, you know, there's flood zones on the island, lava zones on the island. So you're right, because sometimes people will call me and go, I found this amazing deal. It's $10,000 for five acres. I'm like, oh, my gosh. You're on <laughs> I'm like, you're on an active live volcano. That's why it's so low. Yeah, so I always <laughs> say, okay, rule of thumb, if it's really cheap, all of us from here will be buying it up, Right. Right. So then I, they're like, oh, okay, that makes sense now. How is it yeah, so cheap? You can't it. give them away. Lord. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Lordy, 10,000. I got a deal. Yeah. Sir, let me tell you. <laughs> yeah. That is huge. I, I remember I was stationed in Guam. I was I was Navy. Okay. I served eight years in the Navy. And so um, I remember in Guam when that, that continental shelf near Japan had that shift causing mm -hmm. that massive tsunami. Yes. Um. So... My stupid self. <laughs> so the whole island shuts down. They still have the the sirens that go off on the entire yes. island. Yeah. Um. And so everybody had to evacuate and shelter on take high ground. My stupid self evacuates where I was living. Unbeknownst to me, I was living in a flood free area. <laughs> so my apartment complex was a safe haven from the from the tsunami, wow. and I left my house. So bless your that, heart. <laughs> I, I was not aware. I hadn't been and on an island thoughts. in years. 
Yeah. So I was completely unaware of that. But that is a real thing. When we're talking yeah. an island wide shutdown and everybody needs to, you know, shelter in place or evacuate to right. higher ground. Right. Because that wave from Japan was massive. And so so you got, you got active volcanoes, you got floods, yeah. water. So you guys got you got you really have, have to know your stuff. You do because for for example, our island has almost I think it's eleven out of thirteen world climates on our island. So there's like a desert, a rainforest. So that's like it's teaching people where to buy real estate, right? They have these ideas in their head, and one of the first questions I always ask people when they call and want to buy, they're all excited to buy real estate here, is have they been to the island, right? And sometimes if they haven't been here. I'll have them, you know, arrive a few days earlier and say, okay, drive around, you know, to all the different towns. Right. And most of the time where they wanted to live, they're like, oh, absolutely not. I don't want to live over there. And so it's, 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 I always ask that question. Okay. Are you familiar with the Island? You know, and then I go from there. Right. Cause some people are, but since COVID, a lot of people have had Hawaii on their bucket list and have no idea and then just want to buy here. Right. So yeah. Interesting. I, he I heard that there's someone in the cannabis business and they're interested in possibly expanding where can can what's what's hawaii's laws and regulations around cannabis and medicinal marijuana the last i know it keeps coming up every year at the state legislature and i know the governor is for it i saw that he was for it but i think they keep voting against it right now but you know i think it'll I don't know. I, I could see it passing because it keeps coming up every year. Right. I so I've been following that because I have a couple of clients in that business that are asking, you know, to expand out here that are, you know, have businesses in California. Darn. I mean, I'll tell my friend. <laughs> <laughs> well, think of all the people that smoke weed, right? What they call it? Maui, Waui, and, you know, <laughs> it's Hawaiian like, haze. Yeah. Not that I, not exactly. that I mess with that stuff. Yeah, right? Exactly. <laughs> Yeah. So that is huge. I told y'all, I told y'all this is going to be an epic conversation. Yeah. Um, I'm sorry, my friend. So um, we'll keep in touch with Ms. Bento and yeah. bring her back on for future updates. <laughs> on, <laughs> hopefully, as the, you know, it won't be 15 years, but it'll probably be before the, the grand opening of the, the yeah. launching of her development, her and her mom. So, cause that's going to be massive. That's going to save thousands, two, $3,000 on a mortgage. Oh, I know. That's huge. How do you balance it all, Ms. Bento? How do you balance family? You said your husband travels for work. Yeah. You have two daughters. Did I catch two? I, I have one. one. She's in Los Angeles. She goes to, she's a junior uh, at uh, USC. She's in their business school there. Congrats. Yeah, USC is letting a lot of Hawaiian kids in, which I'm excited about. I'm like, let them all in. They just need a chance, just one chance, you know. I think someone on their board, I know Mr. Benioff, who's one of their board of directors. I don't. He owns Salesforce.com. He owns properties all around here, but I think he sits on the USC's board, and he, he moved his family here in COVID. So huh. I think he has a lot to do with recruiting kids from Hawaii, I think, because it's just been an influx of more kids going Good. there. Yeah. How do you balance it all? How do you balance the projects with you and your mom and the frustrations of dealing with legislation? How do you balance it all? I try to stay organized. Like um, every Sunday, I look at my calendar and try to try to stay organized, stay focused, because you can get pulled in all different ways, especially in real estate, right? You can run into a problem. You know, you have a set schedule and then all of a sudden a client needs help, you know, a toilet's overflowing or, or something, right? Or an escrow goes upside down. Um so I would say just being try try to stay focused and organized and um, not sign up. I used to for many years just not say no. So now I'm trying to think of like, yes, I can do that. No, I can't do that. Um, and then God, I mean, I was raised in a Pentecostal church, right, my whole life. And I think thank some days I'm like, thank goodness I have God, right, because it keeps me grounded. And you know, tough days, good days. It's um, trying to balance it out. I go running. I feel like running is my therapy, right? You can kind of check out for like 45 minutes or an hour and then come back, right? Um, sure. Of my day, but just trying to, I think as much as I can stay organized, but it, it's tough. Some days it's it's tough to try and, or, you know, the political arena, development, real estate, being a mom, wife, right? It, it's it's a definitely lot. an act I haven't perfected yet. It's a lot. Do yeah. you model? No. Okay. 
<laughs> I'm throwing that out there. I'm throwing some fish out there, seeing what what sticks to the to the wall. That is huge. <laughs> that's, that's massive. What is? I'm trying to be more on social media. I'm actually shy in person, and for some reason, when it's time to film, I'm like, I don't know. I get staged right, right? What? Yeah. Why? For so many years, I was so shy. I can't even believe I'm in sales. Really, I would let I my believe. older brother do all the talking for us. I don't believe it. I don't. Yeah. Believe it. I don't. I don't believe her one. Yeah. Second. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it's very possible. If Beyonce can have anxiety, social anxiety. Yeah. It, it's it's very possible because I even myself I have social anxiety. Social anxiety, believe it or not. You're shy, but, Carmia, when model. Yeah. 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 I, it's just a switch I have to turn on when I go out and do it. Yeah. Like my, it's, it's, it's like a switch. It is like, oh, when that time is over, it's like, oh, she disappears into the abyss. Yeah. What? <laughs> you, you, you're gone. She, she like, are, you, are you coming to the after party after the, fa the fashion show? Oh, new, new, new. That's incredible. That's incredible. You you all, so the audience, you all know Carmia. She models professionally. Wow. So it's... It, you all have seen the photos, the pictures, the boot wash shoots. That's in, that's ridiculous. <laughs> that is wow. That's incredible. Did it's, you do that for since you were young? Um, no, I got more into it um, in college, my college years. Okay. Yeah, I got more into it during my college years, uh, and then I went forward with it through there and more yeah. steady at the end of my college years. Wow. But no, not from not from when I was younger. <laughs> but they were saying when I while I was in private school, go ahead and put her in some class acting classes and stuff. <laughs> but I was I didn't get more into that stuff until later. Later. Mm. Oh. It's interesting, right? How do you so do you folks both own your own businesses? I oh well for myself, I'm i I'm freelance and I do have an LLC. Oh. And I'm currently and I'm currently building mines. I'm building mines up. Okay. It's interesting, right? That when I got into real estate 10 years ago, it's like, okay, I was just thinking I have to just do sales, right? And now it's like, okay, it's 2024. You got to be on TikTok. You got to, you got to be a videographer. You got to do reels. You got to do, right? Newsletters. You got to, it's like, wow, this is a lot. Yeah, of it, it is so much. You got to be the editor. Mm -hmm. You got to be the photographer. You got to be the videographer. You got to be the person checking as you take the pictures because you, yeah. you can't have someone there all the time. You got to be your own makeup artist. You got to yeah. be your own, you got to be your own um, beautician. You got to do the hair and everything. Yeah. So I look, is that eyelash off? Wait, yeah. I got to pause yeah. everything and fix it. <laughs> yeah. It, it, I'm like, who would have ever thought we have to do all of these all things? Of this. Right? Yeah. That's, that's incredible. Ms. Ms. Bento and Carmia, you guys are incredible for everything that you do. What, Ms. Bento, what do you see for the future of Hawaii? going forward what is your vision what is the plan and you know it's it sounds like you're getting some pushback from legislation but it also sounds you also have some progressives in there that are allowing you to move the island forward and continue yeah. because what tourism do you guys have any major exports or tourism is your tourism. it's military and then tourism your bread and butter yeah. yeah so what is your vision for your for your company and and the future of hawaii what do you project I think, you know, Lahaina, things, you know, natural disasters kind of shake everybody up. And I think it began, yes, it I, does. right? <laughs> what I loved is in COVID, it made everybody stop, right? Especially because Hawaii has the lowest voter turnout. It made everyone stop and kind of start paying attention to hey, what's really going on. So now I'm trying to see, which I'm excited, more people involved. And then Lahaina happened. And now it's really putting pressure on our politicians that we need housing, right? We need affordable housing. You folks are taking too long to approve anything. You know, we don't necessarily need to be overly developed, but the middle class and the working class needs to have a home, you know? And so that was nice to see that there, you know, the governor came out with an emergency proclamation of trying to get through some of that red tape, right? As an exemption and take it off some of these really stupid laws that we have. And, you know, I, I can see one aspect of it of, not to be overly developed and kind of monitoring our islands. Um, but then on the other side, it's like, okay, well, while we're taking forever, people are leaving, right? I think I read an article, 14 people are leaving a day. Wow. Residents here are leaving every single day. Yeah. Wow. I got two questions. One, 
Um, you guys are able. You guys obviously vote for your local and regional um, senatorial and co- government. Are right. you guys allowed? Because my island, we're not allowed to vote for the president of the United States because we're a territory. Um, is that the same for you guys? And then two, how is the workforce there? Is there enough jobs there for its citizens? There are. Um, uh, it depends on what island. So Honolulu or the island of Oahu runs the state, right? I always tell people this. And then it's like the stepchildren are the outer islands, we would call it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's amazing because that island will pass laws. It has nothing to do with our islands, right? It's like, listen, we don't have really have public transportation. We don't have private sewers. We don't have all of these things they have on that island because it's a city, right? And um, so I would say with that, you know, it's, it's, it's just, it's difficult to try and, you know, make it all through and um, just to keep, you know, moving us all forward, I think. For sure. Yeah. For sure. This has been epic. This has been (laughs) insightful. This has been insightful. And I never got to, to, in my military service, I know a lot of people, military, they praise going to Hawaii because as a military um, active duty, the government offsets your income to help compensate you so you can't afford to live. But for everyone else, you know, what do you do? What do you do? Right. So. You have right. to, you have to work. So you said there is opportunities, there is jobs there. I want to end on a positive note. If yeah. someone was on the fence and is considering moving to Hawaii, what yeah. would you say that young boy, that young girl starting a family or maybe has an established family, what would you say to them right now? I would say you can make it. It may take some sacrifice and discipline at first, but you definitely, definitely can make it. Um, I'm a huge proponent of, it, especially my own people, letting them know, telling them, right, that they can make it. You can make it here. You know, dig your feet in. I mean, like, you know, stick your heels in. You can make it. And it's not going to be easy, but, you know, I've made it. And, you know, it took a lot of work, but, you know, and I'm still trying to make it. And I would just encourage anyone that wants to move here or a young kid, you know, Hawaii is a beautiful place. The culture is beautiful. I mean, it's the Aloha spirit, right? And, Yeah, I would encourage anyone to move here. Huge, huge. I love it. Heart of gold. Carmia, you got anything? No, I think we cover so much, so much. And I I really love this interview. I just, well, if anyone's wanting to move to Hawaii, you're going to have to be an earth, air, water, and um, fire bender before you come on land I, i'm joking no but it, just do your research before coming get yeah. deep into that research and reach out to miss bento to see if you can find out further information if you're wanting to buy a home or get into real, real estate there right. so you know some of the base level and you can learn even more before you get there so you're not shocked you know right. who you need to talk to what le- what um what basically steps you need to take so you can go in a group you know you can go there and not waste time right <laughs> because right. clearly it's a time period for you to get what you need absolutely yeah. absolutely how can people connect with you miss bento how can people learn more how can my friend connect connect with you and what you're doing um we can go ahead and provide my contact information um my real estate instagram also is at lylon bento which is just my name and i believe we can go ahead and provide my cell phone and then my email address as well. If anyone has any questions about Hawaii. Absolutely. Absolutely. Connect, connect, connect. Also, we're going to share her website. That's for our audio listeners. That's Hawaii development group.com. And if you want to reach out to Ms. Bento and her team, um, that's L I A I L A N Bento.com. Connect, connect, connect. And we're going to put those, those phone numbers and email in the direct show notes of this episode this has been epic epic absolutely incredible miss bento you are a true gem thank you for what you do yeah. and i want to say this to you publicly don't ever quit don't ever give up yeah. we need you yeah. so you and your mom you know if your mom's watching this, mom don't give up <laughs> we, need yeah. both, we need both of y'all to yeah. turn that that real estate because real estate kind of t- controls everything Right. If yeah. I can't live there, I can't work. I can't eat. I can't sleep. I can't do anything else. So right. you and your mom, please don't give up. Right. Thank you both. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you. 
yeah. thank you all for tuning in to the Gentleman Style Podcast Show. I hope this message was helpful. I hope this was inspiration. And I hope this was impactful. And we learned a thing or two about Hawaii and why we all should consider going there. Thank you all for tuning in. Like we end every show. Take care of your friends. Take care of your family. And always, always take care of business. This is Marcus, your favorite gentleman. And... Carmia Wells, the unorthodox Southern Bell. And the <laughs> incredible, beautiful, super fragilistic, espialidocious, Lilan Bento signing off. Love Thank you guys. You.